Hello and welcome to the Rhino app. Uh, this little presentation is designed for first time users of the Rhino app and it'll cover things like the minimum type of experience you would need uh, to be able to use the app. We'll also cover basic app navigation, just finding your way around the app. Uh, we'll then proceed to uh, load uh, your first customers. And once we've done that, we'll be able to uh, enter our first invoices and we'll follow that by entering in some expenses. At the end of this little video, uh, the idea is that you'll see how repetitive it is, how all of the features operate in a very similar way. And hopefully it'll give you the confidence uh, to go on and explore other features uh, should you wish to do so. So let's look at a few basic prerequisites. Um, so we expect customers to be reasonably familiar with um, an Apple device or an Android device or um, to be reasonably comfortable using a computer. Um, it would also help if uh, you were confident enough or able to add a new contact into your phone and also uh, if you were comfortable uh, sending and receiving text messages. So that just tells us that you're reasonably comfortable using a phone. The next type of experience we're looking for is commercial experience. So this app assumes that you will have sent an invoice to a customer and you're familiar with what an invoice is. And similarly, uh, you understand the need to track staff expenses and purchases in any organization. So during the development process, uh, Rhino deliberately recruited uh, testers uh, who wouldn't have been that familiar with technology. Uh, one of those was a 79 year old gentleman um, who didn't own a smartphone and never sent a text message uh, in his life. And um, it, uh, it taught us a lot observing uh, how they went about using the app. And it also taught us not to assume anything. So in this next section, we're just gonna cover a couple of basics. Um, it'll be familiar to most of you, uh, but we're not gonna assume anything. And without knowing these basics, uh, the app would be impossible to use. So if you could just bear with us you first log into the Rhino app, it'll take you to the screen which is your diary. So to access other features you tend to work through the menu. Uh, so to access the menu you click on the little menu icon up here. And to hide the menu you just tap it again. If you move off the home screen or the diary and you go into another area within the app and if you want to get back to the diary screen quickly then you have two choices you can either select menu and diary or the other way of doing it is just tap on the rhino icon this tends to be standard within most apps tapping on the icon should take you back to the home screen the next thing we'll look at is uh, changing the size of the text so if we click up here we can see there's a uh, font size and we can slide that and save. We can see the text has got bigger. And if we do it again another bit, we can see now that the text is quite large. So we'll just put that back to where it was. Okay, so the next thing we'll look at is maybe you want to personalize the color of the app. Um, so we click on the menu and the primary features tend to be listed here and it's quite common to have like a sub menu indicated by this little icon here and if you click on this it'll expose a further menu underneath. So to change the appearance of the app we go into system appearance. Uh, something to get used to is if you want to edit information you can't just click on it and edit it. Uh, you have to tell Rhino you want to change it and you do that by clicking on the edit link. And now we could change the color of our app. So we could select uh, Lagoon Blue for example. 
and we could click on the X to remove the company logo. We could load a different logo, uh, but I'll just leave it like this. And if I press save, watch what happens the color of the screen. Everything changes to blue. So um, once again, just a couple of basics and uh, hopefully it'll help you uh, in the next part of this presentation. So um, entering customers um, into Rhino is really important because most things uh, tend to relate to the customer. Uh, you'll enter in appointments against a customer, uh, you'll enter in notes against a customer, you can attach documents against a customer, uh, you invoice customers, uh, sometimes you provide a customer with uh, an estimate depending on which industry you're in. So it's really important that uh, we get to grips with uh, and we feel confident um, getting our customer information into Rhino. And we'll cover that now in this next section. Enter a new contact uh, into Rhino. Um, you just click on the menu and you can go into each section. So we need to go into contact and by default it lists out all of the contacts we currently have and before you enter in a new contact it's always good so we'll just check if Mr. Smith exists and we can see we've got a Roger Smith but we don't have a Brian Smith so we'll now proceed to add in because we don't want duplicates uh, so we'll now proceed to add in uh, Brian Smith and we enter in the name Uh, we can we can attach little search tags so maybe uh, Brian is a new uh, maybe he's a customer um, we can enter in Brian's telephone number so we'll just enter in plus four four um, oh seven 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 zero 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 we'll enter in Brian's email address Brian at abc.com. This is quite important because when you email an invoice or an estimate it uses the primary email address. Uh, Brian may also have an alternative email address and then we'll enter, enter in the address so it's the high street um, Shearsby Leicester and the postcode is LEXX0YY and the country is the United Kingdom. So um, if you scroll down there's a couple of little flags by default it assumes that Brian's a customer so um, but you could also have Brian as a supplier. These aren't that important um, uh, but they're just there to help you filter the data later on. So uh, we just hit save and we click on back and we, now we can see we have Roger Smith and we have Brian Smith and by clicking on Brian we can now uh, tap on this and we can call Brian we can click on this and send an email to Brian I'm currently using um, uh, an emulator to be able to simulate a, a phone uh, on a PC so I could record this but when you use this on your iPhone you'll also have a maps icon and if you tap that it'll uh, put the address into maps you'll also have two other uh, key pieces of functionality the first piece is when you click on add you have an import button at the top of the screen and if you select that then it'll ask you to grant uh, Rhino access to the contact list on your phone and uh, you can select a, an existing contact that you have stored on your phone and it'll automatically import the data for that single contact. I deliberately mention single contact because um, when you first come into Rhino and you're looking at your list of contacts there'll be an import all contacts button as well on your phone and it's a similar process uh, you can click on it and it'll uh, once again ask uh, if Rhino can have permission to your contacts on your phone and if you agree then it'll list out all of the contacts 
um, in your phone. Um, now this is a really important step because at this point you can choose which contact or which contacts you want to import so you may not want to um, import your family's details for example that may be on your phone and you can deselect those items before you press the import button but it's a very quick way a lot of small businesses store uh, all of their customer details on their phone and this is a very quick way of getting all of that information into Rhino because as soon as it's in Rhino I can now click on Brian and I can now start to enter notes against Brian, I can enter documents against Brian, I can invoice Brian, I can schedule an appointment with Brian. So the um, the exercise of importing contacts is probably the most fundamental um, things that you need to get your head around when using the Rhino app. So now that we've uh, got our customers in the system, the next thing we'll look at is how we can um, invoice those customers. So once again there's different ways of doing this and Rhino has a very easy way of generating an invoice uh, which will be sufficient for a lot of our customers um, and there's also a more advanced type of invoice called a multi-line invoice and we'll cover that as well. Uh, the other thing we'll have a look at is how to configure the invoice settings so they match your organization. Um, in doing that we're looking at things like your terms and conditions uh, and so on. So we'll cover that now in this next part of the presentation. So let's enter in an invoice for Brian Smith, the contact that we just entered. So um, if we click on the menu and we go into contacts and locate Brian so it's always good to start with the contact and we type in Brian, see how many Brian's are in the system, there's just one uh, we select Brian so immediately we can see everything all the information that relates to Brian that in itself is very useful so to enter in the invoice we just click on invoice and it now is showing me all the invoices for Brian Smith so just to explain the filters um, if you were working on an invoice but you haven't finalized it um, then it will appear uh, as a draft invoice if you have finalized an invoice where it assigns an invoice number um, it'll appear under current until it's been paid we also have another filter here which is overdue and that's simply so that you can quickly filter invoices that should have been paid that, that are still outstanding and finally we have the all filter so let's quickly add in an invoice for Brian because we're adding it against Brian, it's automatic name, it's input the invoice date, the payment due date, the invoice number is draft and it'll stay draft until it's finalized and at that point it will assign it an invoice number. Uh, we also have something up here called created by Rhino um, and we'll cover this um, in another presentation. Um, in the description field we can now type in a description so let's say I uh, painted uh, Brian's uh, kitchen uh, and living room yeah and how much I'm going to charge Brian 500 it's automatically pulled in my terms and conditions and it's automatically pulled in my notes and this is where I would typically put my bank account details um, and, and so on and we'll cover this uh, just after we save this invoice. So uh, I've just had to input a description, an invoice value and I can click on save. Yeah and that invoice now appears as a draft invoice so it's a work in progress invoice and if I click on it um, I can on your iPhone so you can also click on the preview invoice um, and that will show you what the invoice would look like um, and you can just do you can double check it before you click on the finalize button so if you're happy with it you just click on finalize invoice what happens um, if I scroll up to the top it's now assigned 
an invoice number uh, and if I click back uh, and I, it's no longer in draft it's no longer work in progress and if I click on current there it is and if I click on it because I finalized it it's automatically created the invoice document and if I want to view that document I can just click on that now the great thing is because uh, Rhino is all is a digital system uh, you don't need to print out your invoices as long as the customer has them you don't need to print them because they're already stored in Rhino so if you wanted to email this invoice very quickly to the customer all you do is one click email invoice and this uh, invoice will be emailed to Brian so let's do that just email invoice it tells me there a copy of the invoice has been sent to the contacts email address and often people forget did I did I email it did I not uh, so against this invoice it automatically puts in a little note saying that the email uh, was sent on the 22nd of the 11th okay so when you get used to it um, uh, you can do an invoice in less than 30 seconds the other big tip uh, I would give you is voice recognition software has really improved on the iPhone um, so when you click in the description field when you're adding an invoice or when you're adding notes or appointments um, check out the little microphone just to the left of the spacebar it'll save you so much time so at this point I would imagine quite a few of you have some questions um, about for example the terms and conditions the notes and so on the format of the invoice number um, and we'll just have a quick look now at how you can configure that so that um, it meets with your requirements so uh, it's really easy to do we just click up on the menu uh, we click on the system settings and all of the big settings in the system are really controlled underneath the system defaults so if you click on that so it's got your company name uh, that's the name that's going to appear in the invoice it's got your website your email address uh, it's got different tax types um, so if for those of you who are wondering uh, can I enable different taxes then the answer is yes so we can enable in the UK we enable this here uh, we have VAT default rate 20% um, and Rhino will automatically configure the different tax types um, and the rates for the region that you selected when you registered your account so we'll just switch that off but if, but if I switch this on and I go to input a new invoice then I would see a uh, reference to VAT um, under the invoicing there's lots of settings here for example um, do you want to be able to raise an invoice against a contact a, l a lot of this is quite advanced but you don't need to worry about it at this stage there are other presentations that cover this um, you can have a prefix on your invoice number you can have it starting so if you're already using a numbering system and you want to start from that you just pop that in there you've got your default payment terms um, there's other stuff that's more advanced but probably the the four things that you probably want to look at the first one is the terms and essentially you can update your own terms um, you can also input notes people tend to input things like their company registration number their bank account uh, the sort code the account number and so on um, you can also um, when you email the invoice to the customer um, this is what appears in the subject heading so invoice and then it's got a little variable invoice reference so it'll put the invoice number in here and then it'll say dear and once again in square brackets it's customer name so it'll put in the proper customer name and once again you can uh, you can update this here so that you're happy with it yeah and it'll also put in address line one two three four it'll pick that up from your company details so you don't need to physically type in your company details although you can uh, but this will automatically pick it up um, 
So that's just a little bit of configuration and in normal circumstances before you generate your first invoice it's a good idea to come in here and get all of this done. But once it's set up that's it. You can just knock invoices out left, right and centre and you don't need to worry about this. Um, another thing just to point out on the terms and the notes when I go to add an invoice so I'm going to go in and add another invoice for Brian Brian Smith I can see the one that I've entered earlier so I just click on a new one it pulls through the defaults in here but you can edit it in here so if this customer had different payment terms you can do that you can update it yeah or if you wanted the funds for this particular job to go into a different bank account once again you can do this um, okay so the next thing we'll do is just to finish this off um, in the last the last time we um, raised an invoice it was a very straightforward invoice so let's say Brian now wants another invoice but he wants a breakdown of the work so let's do that um, so we're now going to paint the outside of Brian's house so we're going to paint um, uh, Brian's house and he wants a breakdown so he doesn't just want 500 pounds he wants uh, so I now can click on detail line items add and I can just type in um, so I'm going to paint the walls and um, I can input the number of units so you could input an estimated number of hours and a charge rate or you could just say I'm going to charge 300 for doing the walls and click back and I'm now going to add in another line item so I'm going to paint the doors and once again I'm just going to quote a round figure and finally Brian probably wants to know how much paint uh, how much materials so I'll just put uh, paint and stuff and uh, I estimate probably going to cost 75 pounds of paint okay uh, and so on so for now so I've got three line items and if I click on back I can see three detailed line items it automatically summarizes everything uh, and I just press on save yeah there's a lot of other tips and tricks in here um, so if you're selling uh, products and so on if you go into detail line items uh, you'll have noticed the search button so you could do a look up on different product ranges and so on but uh, once again this presentation is designed to give you an overview there are other presentations that will cover this in more detail so we're on to the final part of the presentation and um, in this section we'll look at a very easy way uh, to use the technology that's in the palm of your hand uh, to capture expenses and uh, essentially we're going to use the camera in your phone to take an electronic copy uh, of the expense which means that you don't need to retain lots of paperwork so let's have a look at it to enter in expenses um, what we've done is we've located um, the little expense icon at the bottom of the home screen because it's something that people will regularly uh, access so if we click on it um, it'll show us all of the expenses from this date to this date and to add a new expense it's really easy we just click on add uh, it'll input today's date so we can select a different date if necessary uh, we select the type uh, these are all definable we'll cover that in a second so we click on accommodation and maybe we stayed in a hotel and it was a hotel um, in uh, London um, and then we can take a photograph of the receipt so um, on your phone if you click on this you'll have two options you can either attach um, a document or you can use the camera to take a photograph of the receipt and it's that easy there's lots of other advanced things you can do repeating expenses and so on um, but something else to show you which is quite nice is you can also define per unit expenses so this is mileage where we get paid 45 pence or cents per mile 
and if we click on it we now enter in the number of units so 137 units and as soon as we move off that field it automatically calculates the amount so I could input return journey to Sheffield or whatever and we just click on save so uh, earlier we saw the expense types pop up so let's look at how we edit those so you can customize those for your own company uh, once again we just go to system settings uh, we've got expense types we've got a list of the expenses office rental purchases travel accommodation meals um, and if you wanted to add in another one you just click on add and you can say enter in a description so maybe it's uh, telecoms um, and it's uh, it wouldn't be per unit I do want to attach a receipt I do want to enter in some notes how am I going to pay for it uh, it wouldn't be my personal card probably my company card um, uh, so this is how you set up your own expense types um, and that's more or less it. That's all we wanted to cover. Um, but um, I have to show you one final thing. So if you click up here and we go to user type and if we enable full access um, and we turn on, we edit this and if we turn on financial reporting Uh, we will now get a new entry in the menu called finance and you can set up a financial year once again there's videos covering this it's very straightforward and you click on it and it'll automatically show you all your invoices all of your expenses and you can click on here and see the detail behind the figures it'll show you all the people that owe you money and it'll show you all the people who should have paid you very very simple so the one message that I would like you to take from this is that all we've done is create an invoice and record an expense but we've just made it very very efficient you don't need any accounting knowledge to do any of this this is stuff that you currently do already but hopefully instead of taking half an hour to raise an invoice using Microsoft Word you can now do it there and then uh, in less than 30 seconds and everything's filed for you all the documents are managed for you uh, and so on and hopefully it'll free up um, a lot of time uh, so when you're uh, looking to use Rhino it's a bit like when you buy a television um, when you first buy a television you gotta plug it in you gotta tune in the channels you gotta configure it a little bit and after that it just runs and Rhino will just be the same so um, I hope you have fun and uh, please refer to the other videos